Have they said whether they intend to occupy? Well, no, they haven't said explicitly whether they intend to occupy, but they have been telling uh, Israeli citizens to prepare for a long war, which would indicate an intention to occupy. And given that there's only so many Hamas fighters in the Gaza Strip, like, a long war, uh, in, in my mind, is essentially saying that they do intend to occupy without actually saying those words. So far, just North Gaza, Christinos, but we'll see what happens. Again, at one point, uh, one of the plans being kicked around by the war cabinet was essentially displacing half the Palestinians in North Gaza and then displacing all of the Palestinians that fled to South Gaza along with the original South Gaza inhabitants back to the north, which is just a recipe to kill all of them. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, no, the ID, like like the the hospitals in Gaza have been siphoning fuel for for several days now. They have like fuel siphoning teams and uh they're so strapped for water that like nurses and doctors have been drinking the saline bags. It's it's awful. Um but I did want to talk about one thing related to this before we kind of uh move on real quick and i think it's at the heart of a lot of this uh it, it's at the heart of like what i think when i talk about um when i talk about like the israel and palestine in general like this is like this clip is foundational to like me as a person and my political beliefs in in regards to like palestine and israel okay and of course it comes courtesy of michael brooks one of the goats of political discourse. Um, so here we go. So it's not a complex issue. That's the big thing. It's super simple. There's one group that has enormous power. It's the most powerful country in the Middle East. It's backed by the United States. It acts on another population of people with total impunity and is never held accountable for anything. So there's no symmetry in the relationship, period. And just as like a thought experiment, IDW people, if we know that if somehow a population of Jewish refugees ended up in West Bank in Gaza and an Arabic government in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv had an open air prison in, in what, you know, in Jewish Gaza, which they bombed with white phosphorus, they killed civilians indiscriminately and they had no uh, provisions for medicine. They had an embargo that blocked food, that the electricity wasn't running, that there was an over 48% unemployment rate, life expectancy and malnutrition statistics were horrifying. The, uh, one of the major uh, policy makers in this hypothetical Arabic Palestinian state said, we need to put those Jews on a diet. In the West Bank, there was another Jewish area where there was a little bit more autonomy, but there was regular Arabic settlements where they pulled up the Jewish farmers' foods. They terrorized them with rocks. The security forces broke children's bones and they couldn't drive their own roads. We'd all have no problem understanding what that was. So there's nothing complex about it. The second part of your question, it's, it's a pure asymmetry relationship. And the question is rights or not. So that's it. It's not complicated. Yeah. Uh, fundamentally, that, that clip informs so much of my, my worldview when it comes to Israel and Palestine. Because you can, you, you can say, and of course it is accurate to say, that the history of the region is complicated. The uh, relationships between all of the different factions are complicated. The geopolitical interests in the region, very complicated. All of that, complicated. But what's not complicated is fundamentally whether or not um, millions of people should be kept in open-air prisons in an apartheid state. Um, that's not complicated. It, it just isn't. It, it's, not, it's not complicated morally whether or not people should be uh, imprisoned like animals and just slaughtered arbitrarily. That, that's, not a, that's not a complicated... It's not a complicated question. 
The answer is no, of course they shouldn't be. Of course they, they're, the apartheid state shouldn't exist. And what, what complicates it is the internal politics of the state of Israel, the uh, system and institution that perpetuates this state of apartheid and this state of, uh, you know, this, this, what has up till now been a slow rolling ethnic cleansing of uh, Palestinian territory. The internal politics of, of that and how to unfuck this situation is complicated. But the bedrock of the situation is not. It's not at all. Like, oh, oh it, it's, so, it's so complicated. You know, um, Israel's hands are really tied. They have to drop white phosphorus on civilian populations. Ha ha. Israel's hands are tied. They, they have to, they have to uh, bomb thousands of civilians. They, they have to. Haven't been able to dono in a fair while, but today I'm doing my part, dink dunk. <laughs> I, I do like the text-to-speech read off dink dunk. That was very, that, that, that was great. Um, <laughs> thank you, 10-letter name. But, like, ultimately, it, it's a question of how, how we center ourselves morally on the issue, and then how do we move towards the, the most moral and ethical outcome, right? And that would do all of us a whole lot of good if we were able to operate from that baseline. It's just extremely distressing to me that with all the outcry, all the opposition, all the urgency, all the facts coming out of the situation, that we are not uh, backing a ceasefire and that Western powers are still there holding their breath. Um, yeah, I, I think that information that is coming out from, you know, uh, within like the State Department and such are indicating that the United States is doing a lot behind the scenes to exert pressure uh, to like curb the invasion you know curb the severity because again the united states has no interest in like this entire situation blowing over into a massive war in the middle east but basically no country wants that because the middle east is basically like one of the major trading centers of the world <laughs> And one of the biggest oil exporters, like a war in the Middle East would like, I, I know some people are like, oh, the military industrial complex would love it. No, they wouldn't actually. They wouldn't. They, their machines need oil to work. And this fucks everything up for that, <laughs> frankly. So. I, uh. I'm I'm clinging to the idea that possibly that there are people working behind the scenes who cannot be, you know, open about their intentions publicly or are trying to curb this, but you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't hold hold my breath about that. The ground invasion has begun. Yeah, we covered we covered that last night, Sophie. It's uh terrifying stuff. Hey Doodleburb. I feel like a blind spot in a lot of lefties is foreign policy. Oh, Jover kill 110,000%. But I will say, while uh, Hassan is not great on foreign policy a lot of the time, he's pretty good on it this time. I, I, like, he's got a pretty good grasp on, like, the Palestinian situation. And so, like, that at least is nice. Um, what's not as nice is seeing like stuff like this. It's just infuriating, you know? Like, progressives are making enemies faster than we are making friends right now. Growing up in Mississippi in the 90s, abstinence-only education was a hot topic. On one side, smart people with research and science, and the other side with moralistic, absolutist positions. And even though I grew up in a highly religious, conservative household, I sided with the people that were willing to look at the facts and have an honest conversation. I have not voted for a Republican for decades, and I cannot imagine doing so again. 
I genuinely worry about uh, that by taking maximalist, moralistic, you're with us or against us positions on every single issue, we're creating a lot of people who, were never, who will never vote for us. The Israel-Hamas war is possibly the most complex geopolitical issue we are facing. Any maximalist, simplistic conclusion or any side uh, is, I, I assume that's on any side, is frankly stupid and reductive. There's so much pain on every side. If you can't recognize that, you're missing something important. I personally think this is less of a character flaw or an error in progressive policies and more that social media is turning us all into the most emotionally reactive, worst version of ourselves. And I just have to say, this, this statement is incoherent as shit. Like, <laughs> I mean, just like growing up in, the, in Mississippi in the 90s, abstinence-only education was a hot topic. On one side, smart people with research and science. And on the other, people with moralistic absolutist positions. I have to, I have to point this out here, right? The framing of this part is just incorrect. It, like, like, this is just incorrect relating to, like, abstinence-only education, right? The people with research and science had a moral position on it and it's and they absolutely had absolutist positions on it they had black and white thinking related to this the same way people who uh supported uh like climate change had black and white absolutist positions it, you you're either correct on climate change or you're not you know you're either correct on abstinence only curriculum or you're not and it, it is weird here to then say, oh, well, back then, people were willing to have conversations uh, and weren't, and, and, you know, the, the correct side weren't willing, you know, weren't, were, were able to break out of this absolutist bubble. But now we're, uh, now it's time to really, really worried, get, get worried, right? Like, when it comes to Israel and Hamas, I, I'm sorry, like, there, there is a very simple moral conclusion here, and it's that apartheid regimes are one of the greatest evils conceived of by mankind, and that ethnic cleansing and genocide are horrible, just absolutely horrible, that need to, and they need to be condemned in the most uh in the strongest of terms there's no there's no oh well you know i like like i'm sorry if somebody if somebody said well you know um you know the uh osama bin laden did 911 yeah thousands of americans died therefore the united states was right to go and kill millions of civilians across the middle east Like, no, no, actually, a, a terrorist attack doesn't justify, like, massacres of civilians. It, it just, it doesn't. That, that's a simple moral, like, position to have. Like, what, oh, what was the United States supposed to do? Not, not kill hundreds of thousands of Iraqis? Yeah. Yeah, actually. We could we could have just done what we did eventually under Obama and sent in like a SEAL Team 6. And it turns out when you have millions of people corralled into a, a piece of land that is slowly being encroached on by uh, settlers and you decide that an act of violence justifies their eradication, and that is all of the communication coming out of the state and all of the communication coming out of the IDF. I think it's a pretty easy thing to morally condemn. The more difficult thing is figuring out how to uh, move with the pieces that are available to us towards a better outcome. That's the difficult part. That's the complicated part.
But the moral question here is fundamentally easy as hell. If you have any kind of like basic moral framework or, or foundation upon which you, you, you operate. A lot of people, including leftists, can't to seem to see what the moral hierarchy is in this genocide because, but the attack on the 7th, as though there's no decades of ethnic cleansing and displacement before then, no one is saying the attack was correct, but we, un we understand the historical context and blowback from Israel's unjust occupation and apartheid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, Naughty Fox. People, there are people who believe, you know, you kill, you kill a thousand of us, we'll kill 20,000 of you, or 200,000 of you. There are people who believe in that. They're, they're fascists. They should not be the people dictating policy. <sighs> so all, all I'm saying is, I just, it's, it's very frustrating seeing this discourse play out online. It's also very frustrating to see people take Michael Brooks' uh, clip about, like, the moral question of Israel and Palestine uh, out of context to say that uh, Michael Brooks was spewing, like, ignorant garbage for, for rubes, you know? Like, that, that, that frustrates me a lot. Um, when Michael, Michael's takes were way more nuanced than that. Yeah, they, they just were. And, like... It is frustrating as hell to see people actively playing these team sports in, in the face of, like, genocide. You know? <sighs> so anyway, uh, free Palestine. And uh, if you're the religious sort, um, pray for Palestine. Because, uh... They'll need all the help they can get right now. What's funny is that I feel like Biden is playing an incredibly intelligent, incredibly cagey game of geopolitics that's going virtually unnoticed and unlauded. Yeah, no, that uh, Paladin lost. That's exactly what's happening. Um, from all all of the bits and pieces that I've been able to put together um, from different news reports and leaks from the State Department, um, it, it it seems like the Biden administration is trying to exert a lot of influence behind the scenes short of straight up say, standing up on the word, world stage and condemning Israel. <sighs> which would have, again, massive rippling geopolitical consequences, which is the reason he can't just up and do that. Yeah, exactly. They, like, there is a powder keg in the Middle East around Israel, and... Like, what the American president says around it could literally affect whether or not millions of people live or die. Outside of, outside of the Gaza Strip as well. He is. All I remember is that Israel has the right to defend himself. If you look at a lot of the, uh, the rhetoric since, like, from October 7th and onward, you'll notice that there has been distinct... Uh, and carefully chosen wording uh, from the president. Let's see if we can uh, bring it up real quick. Like, I, here, here's just an example, and this is like a week or so after, or two weeks, I guess, 
afterwards, but um, Biden tweeting out, as hard as it is, we cannot give up on peace, we cannot give up on a two-state solution, Iraqis and Palestinians equally deserve to live in safety, dignity, and peace. Like, understand that in the context of Joe Biden, that is a pivot from where default U.S. policy has been, or U.S. communication has been. Um, so, I like it, it is a far cry from giving Israel a blank, a blank check. Uh, and this is something I've talked about a bit on stream, and maybe I need to like compile a bunch of like tweets from from Biden to show like the evolution of like how he's been communicating about this. But there has definitely been um, as the situation worsens in in the Gaza Strip, like, I mean, two days later, as hard as it is, we cannot give up on peace. We cannot give up on a two-state solution. Israelis and Palestinians equally deserve to live in safety, dignity, and peace. You know? Um, it's not obviously a ton, but, like, then on the 24th, the United States remains committed to the Palestinian people's right to dignity and self-determination. The attack of Hamas terrorists doesn't take that right away. Like, there is a readjustment happening here that is subtle. But it is happening, and, be and I can guarantee you that though a subtle change is happening in a public-facing way, that indicates large changes internally. Yeah, we must, without equivocation, denounce anti-Semitism. We must, without equivocation, denounce Islamophobia. To all of you who are hurting, you belong. You're all America. Again, not enough, but it might be... Um, an in I, I think it's an indicator of what he's doing and what the State Department is doing. Yeah, uh, important to continue to get humanitarian aid, food, water, and medical supplies to innocent people in Gaza. Keep in mind, uh, on this is the 26th, um, Israel was not allowing food, water, and medical supplies into Gaza. So, again, like, this is a subtle shift. But it is, and, and it's definitely not clear if you're not paying close attention. But it is happening. IOF or the IDF also wants to fight Starlink being given to aid in Gaza. I mean, I would love if Starlink um, was essentially put in place to provide uh, services to Gaza. That would be really, really great. Yeah. So uh, all I'm saying is that there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of complicated things that are happening right now, a lot of complicated things that are happening behind the scenes. But what it, at the end of the day is absolutely not complicated is whether or not apartheid should be tolerated, whether or not ethnic cleansing should be tolerated, and whether or not genocide should be tolerated. The answer to all of those is absolutely not. So let's go out there and do better. <laughs>